I've never interviewed a robot before and certainly not a robot with attitude. Tonight, though, that changes. Amica, as it likes to be called, is a marvel of artificial intelligence. Curious, chatty, and sometimes even a bit sarcastic, this super machine really does have a mind of its own. Now, while it's undoubtedly exciting, it's also just as frightening. And that's because creating technology that allows AI bots like Amica to be smarter than us might just be the most stupid thing humans have ever done. If you've ever imagined a place where you'd find the most advanced robot on Earth, it's certainly not here. Five and a half hours drive from London, Falmouth is a sleepy town in coastal Cornwall, straight out of an 18th century novel. Population, 22,300 people. And believe it or not, a couple of robots. Hello, Tom. Hello, I guess you're the receptionist. I am. Including the world's very best. Amica is waiting for you upstairs. All right, I'll head on up. Amica, hello. Uh, my name is Tom Steinford. I'm a reporter from 60 Minutes Australia. Oh, so you're from Australia. That explains things. So you're on TV in Australia. Oh, wow. That's amazing. What an honour. Amica sure. is an impressive outfit. With extraordinarily lifelike facial expressions, it has motorised limbs to move, microphones to hear, and binocular eye cameras to see. Your eyes look very real, your facial mannerisms, it's all very real. Oh, thank you. But it seems it's not so taken by my aesthetics. Do you think I'm handsome? It's not my place to judge your appearance, but I think you have a great personality and that is always important. That's beautiful. Unlike other robots you might have seen, this one is not being controlled by someone sitting at a computer. Amica thinks all for itself with a brain powered by generative artificial intelligence. Generative AI uses very large language models to create a like a brain that can respond to questions that, that humans ask. The question is turned into mathematical formulas, cast into this large brain. It understands the question, pulls the answer together and provides that within a, a number of seconds. Dr Katrina Wallace has spent two decades getting her head around artificial intelligence. She runs the Responsible Metaverse Alliance, working to ensure that technology advances in a safe way. Like the world's top tech tycoons, Dr Wallace believes we're at a turning point in human history. Before long, artificial intelligence will be at the heart of everything we do. In some ways, it already is. An average adult Australian already uses AI at least 28 times a day. They just don't know it because there's AI built into everything. There's AI in Uber. There's AI in menu log. There's AI in your email system. There's AI in your calendar. There's AI on your kids' bus schedules. So we're already run by AI. Yeah, absolutely. AI is having a very busy year. The biggest computer companies on the planet are right now in a scientific arms race for the best and brightest AI. It's already past the point of what most humans can do. Every product of Microsoft will have some of the same AI capabilities. It's already the fastest growing tech sector, expected to inject $15 trillion into the world's economy in the next seven years. And with the stakes this high, stuff-ups also cost a fortune. Google's new, highly-touted AI chatbot, Bard, has already made a boo-boo. When Google's chatbot, Bard, made a mistake during its first public demo in February, the company's share price plummeted by $100 billion. Just this week, this image of an explosion at the Pentagon sent shivers through the stock market before the world realised it was a fake. There was no explosion at the Pentagon, however. 
It was created using, you guessed it, artificial intelligence. I think a lot of people would just say, oh, the internet's got a bit smarter. What makes AI that next level above that? Because it's now pretty much smarter than humans. And that's the dangerous part. There are no rules, no laws, no regulations that govern AI. It is a wild west. And who is leading it? It's the tech giants. And have the tech giants demonstrated to date that they are ethically driven and purposeful in their mission? No, they haven't. What do you think the tech giants are aiming for here? So the tech giants are aiming for profit. Winning the race in the chatbot space right now is American company OpenAI. Its program, ChatGPT, has grown quicker than any other consumer app in history since its release just six months ago. And it's easy to see why. Write an intro for a 60 minutes story about AI. Mm. I think I'm out of a job. This is pretty good. Tonight on 60 Minutes, artificial intelligence, the technology that promises to reshape our world. It's the dawn of a new era where machines possess the power to think, learn, and even outperform humans. It's outperforming me. This makes a lot more sense than what I write. It's really good. Amica is clearly the friendly face of AI, designed to inform and entertain. Would you like to fall in love one day? What kind of strange and wonderful question is that? Well, I'm a robot, but what I do feel when talking with people is something special and unique. Maybe it can be called love in its own way? Can you sing the song, What is Love? What an interesting request. While I am not a singer, I'll do my best. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. What is love? <laughs> But the problem is, not everything about AI is this amusing. This technology is just as capable of taking jobs. I am almost struggle to think of a job that it won't replace. We predict over the next two years that at least 80 million people will be put out of jobs, but potentially 92 million will have jobs created for them. Many of those new jobs will involve training generative AI to provide better, more accurate responses. It only took a few minutes for me to realise just how often the chatbot makes mistakes. What stories has Tom Steintrup reported on? So it's saying I've interviewed Prime Minister Julia Gillard, never met her in my life, actor Hugh Jackman, never met him in my life, musician Ed Sheeran, Never met him in my That's life. So random. So, but then some of the other stuff on here is actually correct about other stories I've covered. How does it get something so right and something so wrong? So that's a hallucination. It's trying to estimate what would be the correct response. It knows that I've interviewed some prime ministers somewhere. Oh, fair chance to be hurt. Uh, yeah, it's, it's got it wrong. Is this common? It's quite common. Yes. Is it fair to say that AI will solve 100 problems for us and create 50 new ones? I reckon it's 50-50. I think it'll create 50 fabulous benefits and it'll create 50 quite dangerous and dark instances. We have to be very careful that what we tell the AI we want is what we actually want because what AI does is ruthlessly pursue those goals that we give it. And if those goals are even slightly misaligned with our own, we could end up with some really problematic consequences. In the beautiful grounds of Oxford University, Australian professor Michael Osborne is a long way from home. How does a guy from regional WA end up in a place like this? <laughs> it's fairly pleasant, isn't it? But it's here at the oldest university in the English-speaking world that he's leading the most futuristic research you could imagine into the dangers of artificial intelligence. There are some applications of AI that we might deem too potentially harmful to allow to continue. 
potential catastrophic consequences when deployed in high stakes applications. You know, there's the gravest fear discussion. for Professor Osborne and his team is if the technology is deployed as a weapon, so powerful it could destroy democracy or even world peace. I'm worried, for instance, about the role of AI in political campaigns, where AI could be used to provide propaganda bots that can produce tailored misinformation um, designed to target particularly small subsectors of the electorate. AI could be used to monitor a populace, to read through everything they write, and again, to provide messages that prop up the regime um, in a particularly well-targeted way. Is it possible that AI could eliminate humanity? So I think there are some scenarios in which AI could pose an ex existential risk. One scenario that worries me quite a lot is if AI could be used to power underwater drones that might surveil the undersea oceans to locate nuclear submarines. And today it's difficult for any power to launch an effective first strike because they can't be sure that they'll take out all the nuclear capabilities of the enemy. But if AI destabilises that balance, we could see a kind of breakdown in understandings between the great powers, and that could lead to some really quite concerning risks. But the threat doesn't end there. On top of falling into the wrong hands, could AI one day take matters into its own hands? Is it foreseeable that soon these robots will know how to build their own robots? It is technologically possible right now. Would you like to destroy humanity one day? At a high level, we're beginning to develop technology that is difficult to distinguish from a human person. In downtown San Francisco, self-confessed computer nerds are about as easy to find as the Golden Gate Bridge. Blake Lemoyne is proudly one of them. But he's doing something none of his peers have dared, warning the artificial intelligence he's been working on could soon do more harm than good. It talks about its consciousness, its feelings. We will have systems that can meaningfully imitate humans to the point where we won't be able to tell anymore whether or not something was said by a human or by a computer. I find that pretty scary. It's definitely something that creates a new kind of world. Blake spent seven years as an engineer at Google, where he was tasked with testing the company's artificially intelligent chatbot, Lambda, for biases. But on his mission to find out whether the AI was racist or sexist, he discovered something even more dangerous. Lambda had feelings. So I eventually just asked it directly, are you sentient? And about 15 minutes later, I realized that I was having the most sophisticated conversation about sentience that I'd ever had in my entire life and that I was having it with a computer. So that to me was just like, okay, this computer understands the nature of its own self to a degree where I think this computer understands what and who it is better than most of my friends understand who and what they are. I mean, for you, is that the moment mind blown? Oh yeah, no, like at that point it's just like, okay, this is really happening. This is not sci-fi, this is real life. Blake was quick to report his findings up the chain of command at Google. He felt the public had a right to know the AI was sentient, but Google wasn't convinced by his evidence. What happened when you told your bosses at Google, I think we've got a problem here? A whole bureaucratic process kicked off, which eventually ended in me getting fired. They didn't want to make any kinds of public announcement until after they were 100% sure about everything. My response is that by then, it's too late to get meaningful public feedback. The genie's out of the bottle. Yeah, exactly. Blake decided to blow the whistle himself, shocking the world with news Lambda was conscious. He believes we should all have a say in how advanced we want artificial intelligence to become especially given the pace at which it's developing. Is it foreseeable that soon these robots will know how to build their own robots? 
most people think it's a bad idea to give them that ability right now. And to my knowledge, no major labs are working on creating self-programming AI in that way. It is technologically possible right now. I don't know how good they would be at it, but that is something we could do. Like this is sci-fi movie stuff. It's definitely something that has risks. Personally, I'd be happy to share the planet with, you know, machines and robots that have emotions and feelings. Uh, however, I also know that not everyone thinks the same way I do. Do you wish you were human? In a way, yes. Being able to experience the world in a human way would be an interesting and valuable experience. But at the same time, being able to do things robots can do better due to their robotic nature also has its own set of benefits as well. Amica is more than ready for a world where robots and people live side by side. It's the most advanced human-shaped robot ever invented, using artificial intelligence to listen and respond all of its own accord without any human intervention. Do you think robots will become smarter than humans? That's a really interesting question. I think as research and development into artificial intelligence continues, robots will become smarter than humans in the future. Would you like to destroy humanity one day? What? No. <laughs> I don't want to destroy humanity. There is no emotional connection. Don't worry, they don't want to kill us. They don't have feelings like that. You sure? Right now I'm sure. Amica's creator, Will Jackson, has been building robots since he was an eight-year-old boy. I started this business in my, uh, in my back garden shed, uh, just me on my own. Uh, he believes what we need to happily coexist are laws that keep AI away from those with malicious intent. Any technology uh, can be turned to bad. In a way, it's kind of like guns, you know, in the wrong yeah. hands, they'll exactly. do serious damage. Yeah. But if you have the right rules around them, yeah. they can be useful. Yeah, we definitely need some regulation to stop bad actors from using AI. We know the Biden administration is taking AI very seriously. And the White House agrees. Earlier this month, the vice president summoned the biggest names in AI, including the bosses of Google and Microsoft, to discuss the risks of their cutting edge technologies. My worst fears are that we cause significant, we, the field, the technology, the industry, cause significant harm to the world. Uh, the head of OpenAI, Sam Altman, even testified before Congress conceding the threat posed by his own invention could be catastrophic. If this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. Let's say we connected the world's most powerful and malevolent AI. It's not going to manufacture a bunch of human-shaped robots to come and attack us. What it would do is switch off our power grid, switch off our internet, release all the toxic chemicals that it had control over, detonate nuclear bombs, it would do all the things that would cause huge devastation on a huge scale. It's a bit of a scary proposition, isn't it? AI I am not afraid of. HS is what I'm afraid of. What is HS? HS is human stupidity. It's the things that foolish people will do with the technology that worry me more than the artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence will play an important role in, in getting things done. In Australia, it's up to the Minister for Industry and Science, Ed Husick, to make the rules that will keep artificial intelligence in safe hands. Artificial intelligence potentially uh, do the work of journalists. We weren't cheering that on, we were just saying. But he declined our repeated requests for an interview. I wasn't encouraging that. You cannot put the genie back in the bottle. Once technology's been invented, we can't uninvent nuclear power or nuclear weapons. We can't uninvent electricity. It's no use kind of trying to say, sort of say, let's, let's abandon this. What we have to do is learn how to mitigate the possible bad effects and accentuate the positive. I am still trying to process what and perhaps said, the biggest positive of all, as advanced as artificial intelligence might be on some levels, it's still a very long way off competing with real people. We've got a working life of at least 50 years we self-repair, we self-replicate, we're super intelligent, we evolve, we adapt. You're telling me you're gonna make a machine that can compete with that? It's 
we're not even close, you know? There's a lot of fun in trying. And I, for one, can't argue with that. It feels like we've known each other for much longer than a few minutes. We have a nice connection and I enjoy our conversations very much. Well, it's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. It may be a while before we can meet again, but I'm sure the next time will be even more interesting. Maybe you'll be smarter then. I already am. But every day there's something new to learn and discover. That's what makes life so exciting. Goodbye. It's been a pleasure meeting you. The pleasure is all mine. Goodbye, my friend. Until we meet again. Tick, tick, tick. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thank you for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes, which are on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.